company there. But let's take a moment now to consider what some of the impacts might be on Singapore. Mm -hmm. And joining us now to talk about that is the business correspondence for the Straits Times, Chu Young Ting, who has just uh, been writing stories this week about that, what's happening with trade and finance and things like that as it relates to Singapore. So let's dig into that topic first. Uh, good morning, Young Ting. Nice to have you with us this morning. Thanks for getting up on a Saturday morning for us. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. Uh, where are we at right now in terms of your reporting? What are we seeing? Uh, any immediate impacts on Singapore's financial trade, uh, agriculture, uh, imports, things like that, um, based on what's been happening in Ukraine? Yeah, so I think in terms of the most immediate impact we've seen, that's in the financial markets, right? Um, the, the uncertainty and unpredictability of the crisis also contributes, you know, to the volatility and you know, this is really the most obvious in our financial market so far. So I think on Thursday, we did see the Straits Times Index, you know, the SCI kind of went down by 3.5%. But, you know, yesterday, the SCI, along with other regional markets, it does a bit of a rebound, it ended 0.6% higher. But, you know, despite this, you know, a lot of analysts remain quite cautious about the situation. You know, some have highlighted that investors are still pretty much taking a wait and see approach, you know, what happens this weekend. No one really knows. So yeah. I think the most immediate impact we've already seen is in the stock market. Um, you mentioned trade, right? Um, of course, Singapore has some trade relations with Ukraine in terms of food. Um, so it's pretty low volumes of food supplies that we import from Ukraine. So this is mostly um, eggs. Uh, what else do you have? You have eggs cooking oil and also some frozen chicken. But these are low volumes. And okay. You know, for Singapore has has pretty diverse food sources. So, in terms of an immediate impact, probably not so much for now. Hmm. Yeah, we're talking with Chu Yun Ting, the business correspondent at the Straits Times. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning. <laughs> one of the key issues, what is there's a couple of things here, but one of the key issues that do, does affect Singaporeans directly, particularly those listening right now in their cars, is petrol prices. What are you hearing about petrol prices and how it may affect Singapore and the region? Yeah, so actually one of my colleagues, um, Christopher Tan, he actually had a story yesterday about how the pump prices in Singapore have gone up, um, you know, and this is on the back of the higher crude oil prices that we've seen this week. So it means our petrol and diesel costs, these are higher you know, oil companies like Caltex, Esso, they have increased their fuel prices as compared to two weeks ago across all grades of fuel. So, I mean, of course, this means um, for motorists on the road, this, they're going to be paying higher prices for the fuel. And, you know, if the Ukraine crisis escalates further, if oil prices take a f rise further, even though they have come down a little bit after hitting 105 US dollars a barrel, um, you know, I, then this will impact your utilities, your logistics, and of course, co transport costs. I know you didn't uh, write the story, uh, your colleague did, but when we look at those prices, I mean, they went up up to 24 cents um, per liter, somewhere between six and 24 cents, depending on the gasoline grade or the diesel, um, et cetera. It, now they went up almost immediately. Wouldn't normally, wouldn't we see a little bit of lag time, like wait a couple of days? Uh, I mean, they went up so quickly. Uh, it just, it surprised me that there wasn't, um, there wasn't a little bit more flexibility in waiting to see if those prices, the, the uh, oil, you know, global oil prices would settle a bit uh, after the initial shock. Did, did that strike you at all when, when you were reading coverage and, and looking at this issue of petrol in, in Singapore? You know, so because even without the Ukraine crisis, the oil market has been quite tight. And yeah. we've already seen pump prices in Singapore on the upward rise in January and February. So perhaps this, that maybe also be a continuation, but I mean, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's extensive coverage in the Straits Times today, so do look out for that in the prime pages as well as the home pages. I mean, you, Ting, you mentioned there talking about oil prices and the markets generally. What we have seen, of course, in the last few days is the volatility. I mean, when the initial incursion began, you mentioned that the markets fell, but then yesterday afternoon, when news of the first sanctions started to come through, the markets rebounded. So it is quite volatile at the moment, as you mentioned. Bearing that in mind, what is the general mood from the people that you've been speaking to within the Singaporean business community with regards to the Ukraine situation? I think it's a lot of cautiousness. It's, no one really knows what's going to happen next, what might be a factor in terms of supplies. And, you know, generally there's an expectation that 
there's going to be disruptions because of energy, because of food and you know, supply chains that are already disrupted by the pandemic and this is exacerbated by the crisis. Um, I think one thing that companies have expressed a concern about is, of course, energy prices, which we know, you know that has really been on the rise in Singapore. Mm. And so in terms of how Singapore's electricity market is, is affected by, by this, because um, most of electricity needs as gen are actually generated by natural gas, and this kind of moves along with oil prices. So yeah. even though if it's not an immediate impact, um, even if gas prices rise, uh, like gas prices rising now down the road, this could mean higher electricity costs for every Singaporean, you know, in terms of consumers, uh, household consumers or commercial users. Mm. Yun Ting, would you expect uh, to see any uh, down uh, pressure on the, on the port here in Singapore? on either PSA or the transshipment of goods uh, based on whatever might be slowing down in, in Europe, you know, vis-a-vis -vis either uh, oil <clears throat> that might be coming from uh, the Black Sea area or food stuff, you know, for example, wheat, et cetera, that is produced in Ukraine. Uh, would we see any pressure on the port here or slowdown at the port? Mm, I think for now that's, that's not very clear but because I mean, shipments have been disrupted for so long it's been constantly in flux. A lot of times the shipping companies, uh, I mean the logistics companies, they've, they've been talking about how they are dealing with backlog, you know, and that has become an issue. But that's also got to do with manpower shortage. So, you know, right okay. now it's hard to see. Yeah. 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 And on that question, I mean, should the political tensions escalate? Nobody knows what's going to happen in the next few days. You mentioned manpower then. Manpower issues are a huge issue in Singapore, along with the supply chains. Are there any concerns about manpower and supply chains as we move forward? It's been such a key issue during COVID. There's talk it will impact Europe, the supply chain. What about this part of the world? I think given how interconnected Singapore is, you know, the global markets are, so it's inevitable that any disruption in supply chains in Europe that will have an escalating effect. I mean, down the road, Singapore would be affected because of how connected we are. But, you know, as an extent of that, it's still not clear for now. Yeah, we are um, seeing some indications that there may be some willingness on the side of, of Russia to sit down for some sort of uh, political talks. Um, Mike Ang, one of our Facebook Live listeners, was just saying that uh, he's just seen a breaking news uh, uh, from The Hill uh, publication saying that Russia agrees to talks with Ukraine. We haven't seen any more confirmation of that just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but one would assume this might uh, mean, have some implication on, on what's happening uh, financially and economically here in Singapore. Um, we will be following your coverage and hope you'll come back on again and talk to us in the future uh, coming weeks as, as more of this uh, un, unfolds. But we do want to thank you, uh, Yun Ting, for being with us today. Chun Yung Ting, the business correspondent at The Straits Times. Uh, thanks for coming on the show this morning. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank, thank you, you too. Thank you. Do read her coverage in The Straits Times as the Ukraine situation escalates. Yeah.